Hi all, Timmy Falconite here. Welcome back to Road to 1K, the Advanced Wars by Web Global League series where I analyze my old matches to improve my Advanced Wars play, and hopefully yours, too. Today's match is a Tier 3 High Funds match on Change against user Anasasu um, at a rating of around 800. So this will be this will be a more of an introductory Evolver level match. So um, it's not going to be super thrilling or exciting or high level or anything, but I'm hoping this can be used as more like an intro to um, high funds type video. So let's just get started. Um, first thing you're going to notice about high funds is the tiers. Now, um, when it says tier 3, on this screen it really means tier 2, because there isn't a mid tier 2 tier um, in high funds. Um, the reason for that is the increase in money and just how the maps are played in high funds um, basically makes it so that unless your power is like super spammable and broken or if you're doing a lot of global damage and you don't really have any downsides um, then on your day to day then you're going to be high tier. Everyone else is basically somewhere in between tier 2 and tier 3 in this mode. Um, <clears throat> so, yeah, that's high funds. Um, for this map, let's take a look at a preview for this map. Um, uh, this is change. Uh, player 1 is up in the north here, so you've got your 2 base strong side over here, and your um, harbor, which, uh, and then you got this um, airport which you need to build a lander or a black boat in order to access. So that's going to be a, a top priority early on. Uh, you got your comp tires in the center here. You got your weak side base over here. Um, I guess it's supported by the airport a little bit, but really it's all on its own. So if you really want to push a lot of units into here, you can take over this base. Just remember that any units that you're pouring in over here <coughs> Um, the units that aren't over here defending, so um, if you are able to push up into here, chances are your enemy, your opponent's going to be able to push down into here as well. Um, and then basically, what the general, uh, the general uh, attack plan, just a nice basic attack plan for this map is to start amassing units in here and then just push down this way and then turn in towards the base um or i guess fell out but this is basically um if you didn't know did we did we have we played on a match with just labs anyways if there's no hq on the map um and there's just labs basically if you take all your opponent's labs you win um and the reason why some maps have labs instead of hqs is uh hqs have an extra defense star so uh, if you have the lab, um, that makes it a bit diff more contestable. Um, and then you can't also can't repair off of labs, so that's the main differences between labs and HQs. Um, but basically, the main attack plan is going to be just circling this way towards the lab, across the straight a little bit if you got um, with landers and such to push towards your lab, and then your weak side you're going to basically going to be moving your forces down towards the comm tower and just trying to keep um, your opponent back. Make sure they aren't pushing too fast into your base or your lab. Um, denying them the comp tower if possible, but um, usually usually if your opponent's usually usually your opponent should be able to get this comp tower. Uh, let's and then this is a pretty new map. Uh, basically published December of last year, so uh, if we go into the map analysis, as you can see, there's not really too much data on the CEOs yet, um, but in my opinion, as far as, just to simplify things, I'm going to just limit myself to tier 2 for now, but for high funds, Andy's pretty standard, Drake's nice because he has the extra move. Um, on his naval units and the global damage as well is pretty good in flax band javier um is fine 
It's just got high attack defense because it's only two comm towers. Uh, but comm towers and the corners, um, not really that great on this map because you can't access them. So if you're trying, if you if you're gonna thinking, oh, well, we can get one of those as Javier, no, you can't do that. Flex band max. Um, Max is, I, I actually think Max is pretty strong, but I think the maps may be a bit too big for Max. Um, Rachel's got it. Excuse me. Uh, Rachel's got her good powers, and her extra repairs, but don't really like that as much as like Andy or Drake. Uh, Sasha you could play, but um, she only gets plus 100 per city nut plus 10%, so it's a little bit weaker, and most of the guys in, most of the CLs in this tier aren't, um, don't have super expensive, um, powers. I think, uh, Drake's, yeah, Drake's is only four for a tsunami, so that'll be coming out pretty fast. Um, and then Sturm and Von Bullet are pretty good, they have s solid day-to-days, um, Von Bullet I don't really like. Of all the, the, the defense, the defense is it bad? Um, but I think the fact that he doesn't have a power really hurts him. And then Sturm, same thing. But his movement, um, well, his movement doesn't help his unit, naval units that much. Maybe the, he reinforces a bit faster out this base. But I don't think it matters too too much on this map because we got a bunch of roads. So Sturm, I don't really think is a good pick on this map either. There are a couple areas where it might be helpful if he's mounted and such, but no, not really. So basically, Drake is my pick in this map. I think Max is solid, Rachel's okay, Andy's also really solid on this map. Javier is okay. Um, but yeah, that's that's this map. He um, Anasazu picked Andy and I picked Drake, so that's this map. Uh, we got a capture limit of 26 for for a reference so probably gonna reach the lab before we reach that but hey anything can happen so uh that's this map that's the summary for this map so let's go ahead and get into the actual meat of the game so um first thing here's another thing that i don't think we've seen yet before um is basically i have an extra um, city in range of him, so but the main effect of this is it'll give me an extra 2,000 funds to player 2. And as you saw in map analysis, player 2 has a pretty good advantage, and that's because he, they have the extra infantry and the extra city here. I think, honestly, it doesn't really need both. You don't really need both as player 2 here. Well, the extra, actually, the extra infantry is over here, so it's next to this area, so it's easier for them to, it's easier for player 2 to test this stuff. So I, I honestly think balancing this map, if you were to balance this map, it would be just just one it either get the infantry or the city. I don't think you need both, but hey. <laughs> this this map doesn't really need to be balanced, does it? Anyways. Um so the first thing that Anasazu does here is he goes for this city instead of the base. And on this map on this map I think that there is actually an argument to be made to do this because if you go to land here, lander here um, next turn, because then you're getting um, this airport pretty early, and because it's high funds, air units are pretty important. So sacrificing maybe a turn or two from this base is like maybe an infantry unit or two, which is important. But I think getting the air units. Um, out earlier could potentially be worth it, but he doesn't build a lander here. He doesn't build a lander for a long time, so that's that's an issue, I feel, from from him. But this is this is again this is early play. This is this is part of why um, if you don't know what a, how to play a map, you kind of want to watch a couple higher level replays just to get um, get an opening out and have a basic opening because. Chances are that someone else has played this map way better than you could ever hope to. And if you go to the, the uh, I think view games, yeah, view games option and map analysis, you can scroll down. Yeah, that's, that's not me. You can scroll down to 
over games and okay whatever you want so always use that if you don't know how to play a map um, but yeah he's moving in uh, he built tanks split tanks um, but he's trying to reinforce over here on his weak side and sort of trying to push on the weak side a little bit um, again not the best move but it's okay um, recons I really like, like recons in um, high funds because they're a disposable high um, movement unit that you can just throw out to block with. Um, and here, as you can see, able to just effectively shield my artillery from this tank with the recon and the infantry. If he moves into the in, in to try and take a shot off, <clears throat> he's just going to get blasted away. So I'm I'm effectively pushing fairly easily in here guarding all of the units here so it's a good opening over here this over here is a little bit less good but I'm basically I'm guarding this infantry over here with this artillery um, so that's that he's pushing in with his units he's pushing in his anti air he's very ex over extending his anti here I guess he's trying to um, keep me off of the comm tower but what that's allowing me to do is just move in with my tank, get a nice shot off, threaten with the artillery as well. This, is, this also is an awful move on my part. Let's take a look at the damage. Oh, not the move planner. Come on. The damage calculator for this move. For this move. It's awful. Why would I make that move? And you'll see I'll get punished for this pretty hard I guess um, the only thing is I'm I guess I'm drawing some fire over this way so I'm drawing him away from um, his strong side a little bit which I guess could might have been effective um, because basically I wipe out his tank and then I move in with um, the infantry here um, and Again, he just threw away his tank here for no reason. The reason why you don't just do that, throw away your tank like this, um, for no reason, is because all he's really doing is delaying my capture for a turn. So, with a comp tower for a turn. So that's not really doing much for him. And he tossed away a tank for nothing here. So, it's just a... Thing. Oh, I built, by the way, um, he built rockets on the weak side, which I think is a fine play. So in response, I built a battleship. Um, then I'm able to start threatening over here, pushing in here. Um, I do agree with the rockets on the weak side, though. It's like rockets are a very good defensive unit. So on this on this map in particular, where you have this nice little mountain range um, that you can just hide your rockets in, it's pretty good. It's pretty good move. He builds a medium tank last turn, I think. So I think he's trying to push me off of this comm tower. But I've got artillery here, so I'm not too worried about it quite yet. Um, um, as you can see, though, he punished me. <laughs> okay, I guess the recon just disappeared completely. But as you'll see here. Uh oh, well, I guess it's dead or something. Um, but I meant to say... Oh yeah, here it is. So I'm moving up the recon. Um, and the reason why that's sort of bad... So I'm baiting in his tank a little bit. But it's not in range of this, so it doesn't really matter too much. Um, and the reason why this damage matters because uh, if I were at basically any higher level, if I hadn't taken that shot onto his anti and weakened myself for no reason, um, he wouldn't have been able to take out my recon in one hit here. So I would have been able to wall with it still. Um, uh, yeah, I don't... Uh, anyways. Um, moving in on weak side here are pretty happily able to 
take out his tank and taking out Andy's um, units is important completely taking him out because if he's allowed to um, get off his power his superpower his superpower especially he'll be able to just uh, bring his units right back to health prominent health so that's part of why it matters but um, at this point oh my god <laughs> gotta stop doing that this point he moves in with his anti-air here to I think maybe just start trying to break down this wall but I've got this guy in range so I don't know why he would waste just toss away his anti-air like that for no reason I've, and I got a battlecopter here too so like he should be probably trying to skirt from all around this range to get over here because I'm probably going to be sending my battlecopter this way to deal with his medium tank but I could also be sending it over this way to try and deal with his Enderax. So, but I, but since he built a second one, he can split him up a little bit at this point. So, there's that. Um, able to do some damage over here. This, this is a nice little formation I've got over here. And it would have worked too. Well, actually it does work. It works pretty well. Um, it prevents him from really pushing hard into my artillery. Um, I'm able to move back with my lander to grab some units to try and push up here. I don't think that the medium tank was the correct move to push up here, though, because it doesn't really have... It's it's a bit less um, able to just push in. Uh, but I think it's an okay move, I guess. <laughs> tank would have probably been better, maybe, though. But, yeah, this is his turn. Retreats with his tank behind the mountain, which is a pretty good move, saving it for when he gets his fiber upgrade. He's got um, a mech with an APC over here, which is an interesting move. Um, he's able to get a nice shot off on my tank and actually take it out completely. So that's good on him. And but I take I take I take a nice nice shot off um, with the artillery here. Uh, then I move in some other units and stuff. Moving my recon here to guard this, and this is a this is a pretty good defensive little, little defensive formation here. Um, to playing against Andy, he's got no firepower bonuses, not much to um, not much to say to his name. This is as far as I could have pushed in with my recon as well. So it's a nice little defensive formation for Andy normally, but because I took that. Got that nice shot off on his medium think He's able to get his hyper repair. I mean, his up hyper upgrade next turn. And that's going to be able to do a lot. It's going to be able to put this guy up to full off. It's going to be able to get this guy back up. Heal this guy a little bit. And this tank as well is it's going to really affect. So, it's going to be interesting next turn. He's going to be able to get off a nice super power. <laughs> Stupid join. Uh, but basically, I'm going to just reload and go to the next turn. Basically, I build a bomber here. So I'm going, you know what? what I'm, I'm done with this. I'm going to start actually pushing here. Maybe push, use the bomber on the battleship if I need to. Um, <clears throat> but here's, here's, I think, where the game finally ends. Is this, this little engagement here is popping the superpowers and the order in which it happens a bit as well. Now, what's something some, something that's nice about Andy against global damage CLs is he's got his hyper repair, so he's able to just repair up like if I pop my super with his little power and still have some stuff left over for either another hyper repair or to save up for the hyper upgrade and get that faster as well. So that's stuff that he can do. Um, but because I... Uh, fired off on his medium tank here um, right now um, let's just look at the damage if he wants right now he's kind of screwed in this northern area here because I've got at least for this formation this is a pretty good nice little defensive formation for him without popping any power or anything so he's got his tank here and his tank has no firepower bonuses and isn't able to break through my recon here um, he's not really able to interrupt here without taking damage from um, my artillery here. Just kind of screwed. 
Um, if he moves in with a medium tank to try and do anything, really, um, I guess he's only gonna he's only gonna slightly damage that my recon or my infantry maybe if he wants to try and break for here. But he's gonna he's gonna lose his medium tank if he does that. So let's say he popped his power. He's up to seven health now. Um, I think this might have actually been a better move. But... No, 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 it's not. Because he's still not able to break through with his medium tank. And I don't think he's able to break through with his tank either. No. So really, but what he does do... Um, and that would have been sort of nice, because it'll allow him him to like uh, uh, get heal this back up and then he'll still have some power left over so like, if I pop my super to repair some of that damage um, but instead he goes for his hyper upgrade right away and what that allows him to do is get some first of all it gives him a nice fireball power bonus so he's able to he's able to just take out <laughs> my recon with a flip for me but he's able to actually one-shot here now. So that this was a pretty good move, because um, now he has, I think, like, at least 20% firepower here. So he's able to, with 20% firepower, you're able to one-shot recons on roads or shoals with two tanks. So he does that. And then, because he have, has plus one move, He's able to move in with his medium tank and just take out my artillery straight up. Now, um, let's see if the firepower bonus actually mattered. I don't think it really mattered. It mattered a little bit, but 10% would have been enough to confirm the kill here. Um, but that's definitely a dead artillery. Um, and then the rest of his turn is fine. He interrupts the cap here. This move. I think what he's trying to go for is to push through here, maybe. Um, but he's never going to be able to break through there with his tank, so... I think he probably would have been better just fall back to within his anti-air range, so I can't really do much to his tank with, um, with my battlecopter. Uh, but he moves in with his infantry here. He's starting to make a little wall here. Starting to do some stuff here this is kind of the best he can do with his tank Let's do four damage over here um, I feel like it should have been more though honestly it should have probably been more but yeah he did four damage actually but actually huh that's interesting because you know you can't really do that much with a six self tank um, but anyways Moving in with his infantry with his extra movement on his infantry for this turn. Nice four move for this turn with his infantry, which is nice. Because this is one of a few superpowers. This is one of a few. And he's one of a few movement boosting infantry um, power guys. But that's only with his super. Then he moves in with his, um, his battleship here. Which he moves it in range of my battlecopter. That's not good. Uh, this artillery is a good move though, it's basically locking down this area, so I can't really push in if I want to, <laughs> and he's, he just goes ahead and yo is the mega tank here. Um, but I can't really push in against this super, which I really shouldn't be pushing too far into this at this point. I should be pushing more towards his base, but I don't think I've noticed that at that point. Um, but all in all... I feel like he did a good amount of damage with his super, um, but <laughs> well, basically, let's just let's just go back a turn. So this turn, he does. He is able to do. Um, I'm gonna subtract 33 from his total at the beginning. So he's able to 130ish. I, I, I'd say he's able to gain, I guess, 20k on himself and do another, um, I, 
guess 20 to me, so that's about 40,000 funds worth on a super, which is a pretty good super, I gotta say, but... Oh... This poor soul. Uh, he just left himself wide open to Drake's Typhoon, and... Pop. Look at, look at the damage here. It's got... It's basically just... Basically, just another um, thirty-three thousand. That's just from pressing a button. Just thirty-three thousand. So that's that's three quarters of what he did with his superpower and all of those nice fancy moves. And just in just the click of a button. Um, but as you'll see, I'm able to push through pretty heavily on this turn. Take out his tank. Do nothing to his artillery. Um, move in with my battleship and start pushing in over here a little bit. Got my artillery here too. I don't know why I'm building artillery to push against this. I should be building tanks really, but whatever. At this point, I'm so far ahead in unit count and everything. I've got both comm towers. It's basically over at this point. Um, move in with a bomber to try and do stuff over here since so just built the mega tank. Um, because mega tanks can't do anything to the bombers. Uh, I get this stupid move off with a battle copter. And honestly, that's his fault entirely. You should have either moved it like here or better guarded it or something, but like that's that's so you need to protect your um, battleships because they're pretty. Honestly, battle copters are a pretty good counter to battleships. Not gonna lie, but yeah, that's that's the low tier grind though. So that's, this is a high, basic high funds match. You'll see expensive units coming out. I think I built a neo tank here because I finally figure out that I need the movement to start pushing in here. If I'm going to be using land units. Um, I got a recon here. But he's he basically takes a shot off on. With his battle shop, ship. And it only does 4 damage on an infantry. So at that point he's just like. You know what? Nah. Nah. It's not worth it anymore. Um, so yeah. I hope. I hope that was a little bit. Helpful. As just an intro to high funds. Um, as you saw. I, did, I made a couple small mistakes, but I think um, I think one of the main things here is you can't um, is that I think he didn't know what to do with his units for for a beginning. Um, he didn't get the land air out and the airport out early enough. He tossed um, he tossed away his anti air for nothing. He Wandered around with the tanks, doing nothing really. Maybe taking pot shots at infantry, um, which honestly, taking pot shots on infantry isn't as bad as in standard, because um, well, so long as you're uh, kicking them off of cities, because it's worth two thousand a turn now, and that started to really, really add up. So it's maybe worth it to sacrifice a tank, <laughs> depending on the context, um, but. You, you can't do it like this, though. Um, and I, I gotta say, my push here was kind of clumsy. <laughs> and I took a lot of damage on my tanks that I didn't really need to take. Um, uh, but he did a good. He had it. Did a good hyper upgrade over here. The only issue is I was playing Drake. So now he's got a bunch of eight health units. They're starting to run out of fuel. Cause Drake things. Oh, I'm so <laughs> Freaking Drake. No chill. This guy is no chill. Yeah, no chill. That was my daily headset drop. <laughs> so, um, yeah, that's basically it for this match today. Um, next week, um, this match I took care of my first episode of this so next week will be this tier 3 fog game now 
gotta say, I always play Sony in Tier 3 Fog. Well, pretty much always. So, you'll get a, you'll get a, and I love Tier 3 Fog. It's basically my favorite um, mode to play. So, you'll get to see a little bit of that next week. Next Wednesday, so tune in for that. Um, other than that, got nothing else really for today, so peace.